What is going on, Tenet Crew? My name is Billy the Squid, and welcome to my How to Play Sephiroth in Elden Ring build guide. I am a huge From Software fan and a huge Final Fantasy fan as well, so this crossover only seems natural. And I was actually very surprised with how well this build in particular turned out. My goal with this build was to recreate Sephiroth in Elden Ring as accurately as possible and as viably as possible. And not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I did a pretty good job with it. As with most of my builds, I wrapped this build up at level 125. And if you want to see the full stat spread, stick around to the end of the video or use the timestamps down below to see what that stat spread is. This build goes all over the place and I was actually very impressed with how versatile this build actually wound up being. So without further ado, let's get into it. And first and foremost, it wouldn't be a Sephiroth build without a big ass katana. And luckily Elden Ring has that for us in the Nagakiba. Whether you go through Bloody Finger Hunter Euro's questline or axe him outright, the Naga Kiba was the only weapon that made sense for this build. While the length and move set are pretty well spot on, the biggest reason we needed this weapon was for its ability to interchange out different Ashes of War and change the damage typing of the weapon. This build dips heavily into both faith and intelligence, and dexterity was going to be the last damage factor that we were going to be doing. Therefore, we needed a way for this weapon to scale properly into the end game. For this, I would recommend changing the Nagakiba's damage type to magic damage. This is going to be the stat we are going to pump the most amount of points into and is going to give you the most bang for your buck as far as the damage typings go. Plus, it actually has pretty decent magic scaling, so it's pretty well a win-win. For the Ashes of War themselves, you have a few options available to you. One, if you wanted to go the one-winged angel route, would be Raptors of the Mist, but I find it to be less than desirable in this game and am not super happy with how it performs. You could also load this up with the classic Unsheath Ash of War. This is very on-brand for Sephiroth and a good Ash of War in general, but I do feel like there is a couple that perform better both for the build itself and for being true to Sephiroth as a character. Those in question would be the Double Slash Ash of War or the Piercing Fang Ash of War. Double Slash throughout the full combo very much resembles some of the combos that we've seen Sephiroth do with his sword, albeit at a much slower rate than what we are used to seeing. Whereas Piercing Fang puts the sword up in almost the same pose that Sephiroth has in the final confrontation with Cloud at the end of the original Final Fantasy VII. Both of these are very good and have different situations where I would recommend using them, but most of the time I use Piercing Fang just because the distance that you can travel with it and the ability to break shields is unparalleled with that Ash of War. Honorable mention goes to the Arm of Melania and Waterfowl Dance. If you end up going up to level 150 or higher with this build, an argument could be made for using this weapon specifically for this Ash of War. But at the level that we are at, 48 dexterity is just not something we are able to push forward. And the fact that you can't change the scaling of Arm of Melania, plus I don't really like how it looks with the build overall. That being said, if you wanted to have it on an offhand and quick swap over to it to just to be able to do the Ash of War and then swap back, could be pretty cool. This is also the perfect time to mention that for the flavor of the build, I am using the Nagakiba in the left hand. Sephiroth has been known to favor his left hand when using the Masamune, although he is ambidextrous enough to use it in both hands, so using it in your left hand isn't a requirement, but for flavor of the build, I like it. Let it be known though that if you do choose to use it in your left hand, your muscle memory is going to have to adjust and you will have to two-hand the weapon to be able to use the Ashes of War. Moving on from the signature weapon, we move on to the drip itself. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is the only part of the build that I am not 100% sold on. And I'm hoping that Shadow of the Erd Tree brings in some new armors that fit this build better. If they do, I will do an addendum to this video. But as of right now, we only have these options. I tried several different chest pieces attempting to get the closest that I could to cool guy in a black trench coat with shoulder pauldrons as I could and I just could not do it, at least not happily. I tried from the Knight's nice Cavalry set to the Briar set to the Confessor set and a lot more and nothing really hit the nail on the head well enough for me to want to settle on it. It made me wish that I could just port in Strayed set from Dark Souls 2 as that look would be perfect. But alas, we don't have that and I ended up settling for the Raptor's Black Feathers. This leans into that one-winged angel imagery enough that I was willing to look past it not having that trench coat feel to it. 
other possible options that you might want to prefer if you don't like the raptors look would either be the black knife armor set altered or Hasla's armor altered although i think the black knife armor set would be the only one that i would be willing to switch to and if you guys prefer this look let me know down in the comments below do you prefer the raptors black feathers or do you prefer the black knife armor set regardless the rest of the build was easy aesthetics wise as nothing goes on the head portion and the preceptors gloves and pants go on each of those slots having the cleanest look for what i was wanting to go for and thus we get to the meat and potatoes of the build itself the spells and abilities that sephiroth is going to use throughout the lands between he is known just as much for his sorceries as he is for his swordsmanship and i wanted to make sure that translated well to this build Mastery over all of the Final Fantasy elements is something that would be in Sephiroth's wheelhouse, and I wanted to make sure that was accurately represented in this build. From your Fyragas to your Thundagas and Blizzagas, and everything below those in Magic here, they will be shown in this build. So let's start off with the fire spells, and for fire and Fyra, we are going to be using Magma Shot. Magma Shot is a unique fire spell in the fact that it is used through sorceries and through a sorcery catalyst, and gave us the most bang for our buck with the stat spread that we have. Magma Shot also has the ability to be charged, so if you wanted to cast a single fire, you could just tap the button and send it, or if you wanted to charge it up to Fyra, you can do that as well. Rocking a very minor 16 FP cost, this spell seemed to give us the most bang for our buck with what we wanted to do. Plus, I just like how the projectile looks. I like how it comes out of the staff. It looks very similar to how people cast these spells in the Final Fantasy game, and I thought it was more on brand than the kind of lobbing motion that you get with a lot of the fire pyromancies from the Faith line. But don't worry, those spells are equally represented within this build, and our Fyraga is going to be the Burn O Flame spell. I wanted to make sure every element of magic had both single target and AoE applications, and the Fyraga spell Burn O Flame is going to be that AoE that we need. Burn O Flame does allow you to charge up the move, but I've never really felt a good need for that charge up, as most of the time I get just as much damage from a single tap as I would the charge, and the extra bolts tend to just miss. An argument could be made for Flame of the Fell God being our Fyraga stand-in, but with a 41 faith cost, you would need a higher level build than what we put forward here to be able to use that. That being said, if you go to 150 plus, feel free to give it a try and see how you like it. I've never personally enjoyed the spell, but it might be right up your alley. Regardless, Burn O Flame gives us that Nibelheim burning look that I was going for and rounds out the fire elements from the build. Let's move on to Thunder, shall we? For our Thunder stand-in, we are going to be using Honed Bolt. This spell is amazing for single target thunder damage, and is one of the best spells FP cost to damage ratio in the game. Having a quick cast and amazing ranged Honed Bolt is the thunder that we definitely need, and goes kind of more similar to the look of the thunder spells in the Final Fantasy games than, say, what Lightning Spear would. For Thundara, we have Lightning Strike. This is pretty similar to Hone Bolt, both in cast speed and the range that it goes, but it AoEs out, making this the primary middle ground for your Thundering needs. This is one of my favorite Lightning spells in the game, and again, gives you that Final Fantasy look for how the spell actually casts and behaves, making it the perfect Thundara stand-in. And lastly, for our Thundaga, we have Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. This one is a bit of a finicky move, and while you might think that this is going to be your AoE move, I would much rather use regular Lightning Strike or Thundara for that AoE needs. This one is going to be a single target large enemy nuke spell. You get underneath of them, let this off, and each one of those bolts, every time they jut out from you, is going to do damage. This spell can either do a ridiculous amount of damage or it can barely do any damage at all and oftentimes for smaller enemies it just straight up misses very niche spell but one that you can get a ton of use out of in the right situations and that's what makes it the perfect stand-in for Thundog, in my opinion. An argument could be made for Death Lightning, but I just don't like it flavor-wise. I don't like how the aesthetic looks with the smoke kind of coming off of it. I much prefer the red bolts from Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. And lastly, from our Final Fantasy elements, we have the Blizzard spells. 
And starting us off with the standard Blizzard spell, we have Glintstone Ice Crag. This is a single target projectile that goes at a pretty slow speed, but just has that look of the standard Blizzard spell, especially from Final Fantasy Remake and how the Blizzard spell behaves in that. With a low FP cost, quick rapid casting, and a pretty decent frost buildup, this is the perfect Blizzard stand-in. And is followed up by Blizzara and Blizzaga, both being represented by Zaymore Ice Storm. Giving Zaymore Ice Storm just a tap gives us the Blizzara effect and makes a pretty sizable, although short-lived AoE around us. This one is going to be for your mobs of enemies around you and is pretty good at crowd control, especially if they are slowly coming in at you as the effect does linger for a decent amount of time. Not quite as long as the full charge goes, and although this does take quite a while to cast, that blizzard lasts a very long time, making this the perfect Blizzaga stand-in. In most cases, for larger enemies, if you use the spell on them, one cast of this will be enough to hit them with the frost status effect. And once Frostbite is built up, you have a few options on what you can do with it. You can either use one of your fire spells to reset the Frostbite counter, or you can just let it sit on there for the 30 seconds and enjoy the 20% increased damage. And now that we have the basic Final Fantasy magics out of the way, let's get on to Sephiroth's signature moves, for which there are about three that I was able to find stand-ins for. And first things first, it would not be a Sephiroth build if Meteor was not represented in some capacity. And I feel like the Meteorite spell is the perfect representation for Meteor in this game. Combining this with the tried and true classic of the Cerulean Hidden Tier for infinite FP and the Cracked Magic Tier increasing magic damage, and this is a boss shredding machine, specifically the larger bosses. Meteorite is still a little bit finicky when it comes to some of the smaller enemies, although each Meteorite of Estelle does have the ability to knock down some of these smaller enemies, so it's not entirely useless in that regard. But where this spell truly shines is in mass crowd control in a cone shape directly in front of you or large enemies that can soak up multiple of the meteorites of Estelle in one go. And while I feel like Meteorite of Estelle is a no-brainer for a Meteor stand-in, if you're wanting something a little different to add to the repertoire, maybe consider using Ronnie's Dark Moon as your Meteor stand-in, as the moon effect does kind of resemble the Meteor spell on the cover of the game. Next up, I brought in a move from some of Sephiroth's side appearances, both in Smash Bros. and the Kingdom Hearts series. This move is one that is infamous in the Smash Bros. scene, Shadow Flare. In both its Smash Bros. and its Kingdom Hearts appearances, Shadow Flare is symbolized by orbs that slowly encroach on an enemy and then after they have been cast will slowly explode. This is something that I wanted to encompass in this move in Elden Ring, and I feel like nothing does this better than Ancient Death Rancor. Resembling more of its Kingdom Hearts counterpart, Ancient Death Rancor looks like Shadow Flare almost to a T, having multiple projectiles that slowly encroach in on an enemy after they are cast, giving that kind of encroaching inevitability to the spell that Shadow Flare is known for. And lastly, let's get to a completely optional part of the build. Depending on how you like to play these games, you might not like interacting with this mechanic, but I'm going to bring it up anyway, just because I do think it has a good flavor with Sephiroth and Elden Ring. And that is going to be the Mimic tier, mimicking the Sephiroth clones that we see throughout the Final Fantasy VII universe. If you want to use this and have a Sephiroth clone fight beside you, feel free to do so. If you don't like how these summons work in this game or the Mimic tier specifically, feel free to disregard but i do think that there is some flavor to be had with this particular move and this rounds us out to the build and the stats overall what are we using to make this actually all happen Starting off with the stats, as most Elden Ring builds go, you need to pump that Vigor stat up, and this is going to cap us out at the soft cap of 60 Vigor. Every build should have this, or at least try to get as close to this as they possibly can. And with the stat spread that we have, luckily we were able to do so. Also, with most builds, we are going to ignore the Endurance stat. Stamina is not something that is in short supply in Elden Ring, and I don't think I have ever leveled this stat up outside of wanting to get heavier armor. 
moving down to our damage stats this is where all of our talisman slots come into play it might not be the most exciting use of talisman slots but getting as many free levels as we could out of these talismans made this build possible starting off with our strength we moved it up to 18 the minimum requirement to one hand the nagakiba and kept our dexterity at 23 which was also the minimum requirement Using both the Prosthesis Wearer's Heirloom and Millicent's Prosthetic, we were able to get 10 free points of Dexterity, making the 23 Dex cap possible. Millicent's Prosthesis also has the nice benefit of increasing the damage whenever you do chain attacks, which is a nice little bonus, especially if you are going to be using the Double Slash Ash of War. Moving over to our magic stats, we have 55 intelligence, enough to be able to use Meteorite of Estelle with the help of the Stargazer's Heirloom Talisman. For Faith, we were able to get up to 28 with the help of the Two Fingers Heirloom, enough to be able to use Lightning Strike, which is our highest Faith requirement spell. Knowing that our faith was going to be our lowest stat, I am using the Gravelstone Seal to help amplify the lightning damage from the lightning spells that we have. Unfortunately, this doesn't help burn O Flame, but the base damage of that spell is so high as is, I don't think you'll be missing the increased damage. Since our highest ranked damage stat is 55, we did change the Nagakiba to Magic to help maintain some of that upfront melee damage through the Intelligence stat. And the staff we will be using is the Academy Glintstone staff. This does not have as good of scaling in the late game as something like the Royal Scepter would, but at those mid levels of intelligence, which is where this build rounds out, the Academy Glintstone staff is second to none. And since the sorceries that we are going to be slinging are not specialized to one specific school of magic, there is no reason for us to try to use one of these specific schools. The Academy Glintstone staff is a jack of all trades staff and will get the job done the best that I have found. It's worth noting that the only spot I think this build could be improved for a 125 build is with the Arcane stat. The starter build that I picked was not the original plan for this build, and if I could do it over again, I would most likely pick a build with a lower arcane stat. That being said, the arcane stat is not entirely wasted as the Nagakiba does do bleed damage, so you are going to get some benefit from that arcane stat at the very least. And that about wraps it up. Thank you for watching my Sephiroth in Elden Ring build guide. What did you guys think? Are you going to replicate this build or take pieces of it to make your own Sephiroth build? How could this build be improved? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to see more pop culture builds injected into Elden Ring, let me know what you want to see down in the comments below and maybe I'll make a build of it. But until next time, Tenacrew, if you enjoyed yourselves, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more builds similar to this. Until next time, take care. Be safe. Much love. Bye-bye.